Hi, everyone. So today we're going to do adding and subtracting rational expressions. And actually, it's not just today. You're going to have two days to do this. So you will get to choose, well, do I want to take all the notes and then work on the homework for two days? Or do I want to do half the notes, work on part of the assignment until I get to the new ones, and then do come back to the notes? This is going to be up to you. Okay, and I will kind of tell you where halfway is. So if you wanted to just focus on those first examples for the assignment and then come back to the notes, you may. Okay. So we're going to add and subtract rational expressions. And just like our two lessons before, we're going to look at regular fractions, I guess I should say, um, what we did in grammar school. How did we add or subtract fractions? Well, if you remember, so if I gave you two fractions and we were to add or subtract them, you need a common denominator, okay? Now, lots of times uh, you might just multiply them out but really with rational expressions, we want to make sure we get the least common multiple, okay? So I'm going to do it this way. So if we look, 6 is 3 times 2. And 15 is 5 times 3. So as you can see, they already have a three in common. So what's happening, and I'll try to use different um, colors so you can see. What this one is missing is a five, right? What this one's missing is a two. And now they look like common denominators. Do you guys see that? How I just made them look like each other. Now, the other thing is, whatever we do to the bottom, so see how I'm multiplying the first one by five and the second one by two? Whatever we do to the bottom, we must also do to the numerator, the top. So if I'm multiplying this denominator by five, I must multiply that numerator by five. If I multiply this denominator by two, I must multiply this numerator by two. So let's do that now. Five times one is five. All over, let's multiply all of these now. Five times three is 15. 15 times two is 30. Use your calculator, go for it. We have addition. Let's look at this numerator. Two times two is four. And let's make sure we have that common denominator, right? So five times three is 15, 15 times two is 30. Very good. So really what we can do now is put these together over one or the same denominator, right? And now we know we can add five and four. Five plus four is nine. And there we go. Now, in the past, we have also reduced this, right? Because 3 goes into 9 and 3 goes into 30. So if you want, I'll reduce this right now, which is 3 over 10. But most of the work that we're going to do today and next class, we won't be able to reduce. It will be combining like terms and then leave it as is, okay? So... Here is an example of a very basic one. Well, not basic. I guess it's your straight level of the standard, okay? Of course, we will be doing more easier ones and then maybe one or two more difficult ones just to check that balance, okay? So here we are doing a basic standard, regular standard. So we have three over x plus two minus two over three x plus six, okay? So our first step will always be to factor anywhere we can, because when we factor, we're able to do that least common multiple and we don't have to make it so complicated. 
So if we look through our problems right now, the only place we can factor is this denominator. They both have a three in common. So I'm going to take that three out. Okay. Now I like this. The reason why is because look, they already have a common group right there. So really, what's the only thing missing from the first denominator that is in the second denominator? A three. Right? I'm going to put that as a group. And then down here, because we're getting common denominators, whatever we do to the denominator, we do to the numerator. So you see, I, I looked up here and I'm like, ooh, what's missing is that three there. So whatever you multiply to the bottom, you must multiply to the top. Now, what I would also do is this, when you have a common denominator, just keep it factored don't multiply it out. You don't have to do any of that. So let's multiply that through. 3 times 3 is 9. And then that common denominator is there. Minus, well, luckily, we didn't have to multiply anything on that side. So that stays the same. Now I'm going to put it together. So 9 minus 2 over that common denominator. And then subtract in this case. So 9 minus 2 is 7. So our final answer is 7 over 3 times x plus 2. Okay. Let's see if we can do some of these together. And again, I'm going to start basic. Okay. So as you can see from example 1, at least example 1 through C, or A through C, they already have a common denominator. Because we're going to look at some tricks that might happen and some extra steps before we practice that common denominator, okay? So again, focus on factoring. It's okay, we don't have to factor. Common denominator, there's already a common denominator. So now we can put them together. So three plus four all over seven X. That common denominator. 3 plus 4 is 7 over 7x. Now, remember earlier I said in most cases, you're not going to have to simplify. And in this case, we are, right? Because 7 over 7 is 1. So 1 over x. And remember, I knew that x is still in the denominator because where is x here? It's in the denominator. So it stays. And we're done. So it's really nice when they give you common denominators, right? Let's see if I can do a little bit of a trick. So for B, factor. Well, as we can see, all of these are binomials. We don't have to factor. Now, common denominator. Look, at they both have the group of x minus 5, so they're already common. So let's put this together. And this is where the trick is. So I'm going to leave a note. Be careful. with subtraction. Why is that? Well, let me put the top together. We get 3x minus 3 minus. Now, the thing is we're subtracting that binomial right there. So for subtracting all of that binomial, you have to put it in parentheses. all over that common denominator. Okay. Now we have to simplify, okay? So what are we gonna do first? Well, the first thing we're gonna do is distribute that negative out. So on top right now, I have x minus three minus seven plus x all over that common denominator. I still can simplify because I can combine like terms. So think what you can combine. We have x plus x, which is 2x. And we have negative 3 
minus 7, which is negative 10, all over x minus 5. All right. Unfortunately, I'm going to tell you there's more to go. Because if you look at the numerator, what do they have in common? They have a 2. So let's factor out that 2. And what do you know? Just like our simplifying section in 2.1, what can we do here? We can cancel those out. Okay because they're a group, and we're left with a value of 2. Isn't that crazy that this subtracting of rational exponents came out to just the value of 2? Mathematics is amazing. So here's what I'm going to do for your notes, so that way you can keep track. So when I put this together, okay, I then distributed I then combine like terms. I then factored. And then I see if I can cancel. This might help you when it comes to simplifying, okay? We'll refer back to this one, okay? What I suggest is when you do your assignment, really match up which example it looks like so that way you can follow those steps and get used to it. All right, so in C here, factor. There's nothing to factor, right? We can't factor an x squared anymore. We can't factor 4 or x plus 2. Then our next step would be a um, common denominator. As we can see, we have a common denominator. That's awesome. So let's put this together. So we have subtraction again. So x squared minus. Now in this case, we do not have to put parentheses around the 4 because it's only one term. We didn't up here because there were two terms that we had to subtract. All right, even let's almost follow these. On top, can we distribute? No, we can't, we don't have to distribute. Can we combine like terms? No, there's nothing in the numerator that can be combined but can we factor? Yes, we can factor because what is this called again? This is the difference of squares. So let's get used to this, right? So that means one's adding and one's subtracting, but don't forget to take the square root of both terms. And now if we look at our problem, how can we simplify this more? We can cross these off, leaving us with x minus 2. So I'm going to label that again. What did we do here? We factored and cancel. We're going to do one more right here just to see a little bit different. And then I'm going to give you a choice, okay? So let's factor, right? We can't factor the 1, can't factor the 8. So I'm going to do this for you here. Step 1, factor. Okay, so let's factor everything. So 1 cannot be factored. x plus 4 cannot be factored. Plus. 8 cannot be factored, but what about that x squared minus 16? That again, like up here, is the difference of squares. So let me factor that. So it's x plus 
4 times x minus 4. Now remember, it's a group. You guys see how I factored? All right, 2. 2, we're going to look for a common denominator. Okay, so I'm going to use the pencil right now because what is missing? If I put this together as a group, because it is a group, how can I make this one look like this one? Well, what am I missing? I'm missing an x minus 4. You guys see that? Now I made them look like each other. It's okay if they're switched like this because multiplication is commutative. So you, 4 times 3 is the same as 3 times 4. Okay, so they look the same. Now let's think. Let's put this rule. Um, how do I make this um, shorter? Um, what ever you do to the bottom you do to the top. Okay, so let's do that now. As you can see, I put in this x minus 4. So what we're going to do is put in this x minus 4. Now, the reasoning behind this, right, is because what is something over itself? 1. And anytime you multiply by 1, you get the same value. So that's why we can do this. All right, so what we're going to do is put this together because now we have a common denominator. So here, I'm gonna rearrange this. This is one times x minus four plus eight all over that common denominator. Remember, I told you, you did not have to multiply that denominator back out. Now, some of you might recognize like, Heckman, why'd you put that one there when it's gonna be itself? Well, because it's not always gonna be a one. And I wanna make sure that you guys know this. So we're going to step four would have been um, add or subtract, depending on what you have over the common denominator. Okay. All right, now we're going to distribute this one out, right, which gives us x minus 4 plus 8 okay. over that common denominator. Okay. So again, what did I do? I distributed Okay, now we're going to combine like terms. So x and then negative 4 plus 8 is a positive 4. Now remember, that's a group. So I'm going to put parentheses around it. Because can everybody see what's going to happen for the next step? So what did I do here? I combined in like terms. And now what can I do? Oh, look, I can cancel these groups, right? So cancel. Now be very careful because we made this mistake in simplifying. Where is that x minus 4? That x minus 4 is on the bottom, so it stays on the bottom. Now, if we canceled everything on top, what's left in the numerator? The value of 1. Whew. 
So this is your choice right now. You're able to stop this video and go to your assignment and do about, I think it's about half, half of the assignment has common denominators and maybe a, a difference of squares that you can use these examples for. This is your choice. Or you can move on right now with your notes. Remember, you have two days to complete this lesson. Of course, I'm gonna continue. All right, you see how this side's a little bit more complicated, right? We don't have common denominators at all. So, well, I guess we do in this last one. I wonder what the trick is. So we'll see what happens down here. But for E, the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna check if I, if I can factor. Three, I can't factor. Two, I can't factor. X plus one, I can't factor. X minus three, I can't factor. When I am going to do two to remind myself that these are groups right here. Okay. That's very important. Very important. Because since they are groups, they have to be together. So the question is, what is missing? Well, from this side, we are missing an X plus one. You have to put them together. You can't be like, well, can I, um, to get these to equal, I'll just subtract four on this side. No, you can't do that. You have to do it as the group, okay? So as you can see, this is missing X plus one, which also means that this is missing X minus three. Now, do you guys see how those two are looking like each other. Okay. After we figure out what's missing, whatever we do to the bottom, we must do to the top. You guys see that? Okay parentheses is going to go insane right here. Okay. All right. So let's put it together under the common denominator. So here in this first part, we're saying three times X minus three. Okay. I'm not doing any of the distributing yet because I don't want to confuse you. I want to do it step by step. Then we have subtraction. What do we have to remember about subtraction? that we're doing it to both terms. Well, what's good is that when we do this minus negative two, we are multiplying that negative out to the X plus one. Do you guys see that? All over the common denominator. The common denominator is X minus three times X plus one. Don't try to go forward yet. Okay, all we did here was find out what's missing. Whatever we did in the bottom, we did in the top, and I put it together. This is where people make the biggest mistakes. You cannot cancel until the very end. So note, do not cancel. until last step, okay? I have a lot of people that wanna cross out the X minus three and X plus one. But remember, we learned from simplifying the other day that you can't cancel when you have an adding and subtracting in the middle of the, the terms, okay? So, the next step, just like in our thing right here, how we add, subtract, over common denominator, we just did that. What's the next step? Distribute. So we're gonna distribute the three to the X and the negative three, oops, sorry. We're gonna distribute the negative two to the X and the one. I'm gonna write it down here so I have room. So we have three X, minus nine, that's distributing the three out. Then we have 
minus 2x minus 2. So that's distributing the negative 2 all over that common denominator. All right, after distribute, remember you could go back to the other page. After we distribute, we combine like terms. So what can we combine like terms on the numerator? Well, 3x and negative 2x is an x, and negative 9 and negative 2 is negative 11. Again, that's a group, right, that stays together. And then a common denominator. Now we look at either factoring if we can or canceling. Well, we can factor. And what do you know? We can't cancel. So this is our answer. Okay. Dun, dun, dun. F. Step one, factor anything we can factor, right? So, um, the top stays the same, right? Because numerator can't factor two, but I can factor this down here. I'm going to actually have to factor it twice. Oh, wait a second. I think we added in an extra X here, guys. So let's, mm, maybe I want to have that in there. You know what? Let's keep that X in there. So what we're going to do is change this to a three. Uh, you know what? No, we're not. Never mind, it's done. I don't want to make it too complicated. Okay, so this is x squared, this is x, and let's get rid of this x. Do, 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 do. It's not there. Okay, so let's factor this. Again, you can factor it by your box or your grouping, no matter how you want to do it, but you're going to have to do that extra stuff. Hence also why your assignment is not very long because there is a lot of factoring. So um, I'm just going to factor this quickly. So this is x minus 4 times x minus 1. If you're forgetting how to factor and I'm not around, you can always go back to the lesson on 1.2, which was factoring. Now we're subtracting. This numerator, we cannot factor, but we can factor down here. So I'm going to factor this quickly. So it's x plus 4 times x minus 1. All right, I want you to see what they have in common. As you can see, they have already this in common. So what is missing from this side? Well, what's missing from this side is an x plus 4. What's missing from this side uh, is an x minus 4. Take a moment. Now do they look the same? Yes. Okay. Take that moment, guys, because if you rush through it, you might find out like, hey, I made a mistake because they don't have a common denominator. So take that moment and say, do they look like each other now? Yes, they do. X plus four, X minus four, X minus one. So we're good. But whatever we do to the bottom, we have to do to the top. If you guys like using two different colors like I am, so I can tell what I'm what I'm multiplying by. I have markers and um, colored pencils up in my cabinet that you guys can use tomorrow. Okay, now I'm going to rewrite this under the common denominator. So I have two times x plus four. Remember, I'm not going to do any of that distributing until I have everything under that common denominator minus. Now, the good thing is I would be distributing that negative x to these two, so I don't have to worry about that. So negative x times x minus 4 all over that common denominator. OK. 
hey, something is flashing in my head right now. It's this rule. Do not cancel until the last step. So no canceling. Don't do it. Okay, don't start crossing off. The next step is distribute. Again, you can follow those steps on the other page if you need to. So this is 2x plus 8. All right, that's me distributing this 2. And now I need to distribute that negative x, which is negative, well, x times x is x squared plus 4. All over x plus 4 times x minus 4 times x minus 1. All right, let's combine like terms, but let's also do this. When we combine like terms, let's put it in standard form. If you remember, standard form is going from highest exponent to smallest exponent, okay? So we have a negative x squared, um, a positive 2x, and a positive 12. all over our common denominator. And what do you know? We are done. And the reason why I know this is because there are not two numbers that you can multiply to give you 12 but add or subtract to give you two. Okay, so we are done. You don't have to worry about factoring that or anything. It's a lot of work. I'm hoping down here it's not as much work, but we'll see what happens because this probably was the most complicated one, okay? So one more, and then we'll be able to finish our assignment by using these notes. Make sure you use your notes. Okay. What do you like, guys? Well, I don't know about you, but I like it that we have a common denominator, okay? So I know our step usually is to factor first, but really I'm gonna factor and distribute. I'm gonna do it anyways, just so you can keep the same process. So if I were to factor first, I see what do they have in common? They have an X. So I have X times X plus 14. all over x minus 5 minus 14x plus 25. You'll find that all I'm going to do is redistribute that x in a moment. Common denominator, so I'm not missing anything. So now I can put it all together. So I have x times x plus 14. Now be careful of this subtraction, right? It needs to go to both terms. So I need to group them. All over X minus five. Okay. The good thing is even though we're not supposed to cancel, there's nothing you can think that would happen there. All right, so let's distribute that x and that negative. Okay. So we end up with x squared plus 14x minus 14x minus 25 all over x minus 5. Do you remember what to do after distributing? Well, distribution or distributing and putting it together, huh? Combine like terms. So the only thing we can combine it are those two x's there. So x squared. So the 14x and the negative 14x cancel. Now be careful. This is not the answer yet. Because look at that numerator. That is the difference of squares. It comes up. 
So difference of squares would make this x plus 5 times x minus 5. Now what happens? We can cancel. Awesome. So we have x plus 5 is our final answer. Now, we can keep that on top because where is the x plus 5? It's on top. All right, let's see what we can do uh, with your practice. If you need help, remember, ask me. We have two days, guys. All right. Thank you.